Star Wars has a very limited bag of tricks. It's like there's the good guys, the Jedi Knights, and the bad guys. Why do you like Star Trek better than Star Wars? The reason I like Star Trek better than Star Wars, there, there, there are actually two answers to that. I was 10 years old when Star Trek debuted, and that was the perfect age for me to encounter that amazing universe. Uh, I, I sometimes joke that other people have heroin, I have Star Trek. You know, it was like, it was the thing I'd been waiting for, and I just loved it, and it's been hugely influential in my life. Star Wars, on the other hand, came out when I was in my early 20s. And so, if I had been 13 years old when Star Wars came out, that would have been my Star Trek, you know. And, uh, but it was just, I was just a little too old for it to be, engage me in a way that would have really been hugely meaningful. I liked it. I thought it was a very, very good film. But, but also, I, I like the Star Trek universe better. I think it has a lot more opportunity for a wide variety of stories. I think it's much more able to comment on issues of the moment. You know, Star Trek was deliberately written like Twilight Zone. These were uh, Gene Roddenberry and Rod Serling were both men who had a lot to say about um, race, about social issues, about war, and uh, and they said it. And um, I think Star Wars is much more kind of a um, escapist entertainment. I think it comes from a very different place. But again, it's not for me to badmouth anything. I'm glad The Mandalorian has been successful. I think the more recent Star Wars films were problematical because they kind of didn't really know where they were going and would go two steps to the left, two steps to the right, and then, you know, walk into a wall. You know, so it was like, um, I feel very sad about that because um, they, it could have been better. And I, I think there's a problem when people decide that they're going to go deviate from what's expected and go in the exact opposite direction because often it doesn't create good art, it just creates... Um, chaos. So I think you have to be very careful of why you're doing, making certain creative choices because they, they, if they don't follow the emotional line, um, then you're not going to engage an audience. And also an audience that feels a, a very huge part of ownership yes. in the story and the yes. characters. And that's, and that, but, but the funny thing is that the audience's ownership of something is a fine line to walk because you don't want to just give them what they want because then you're just reiterating the same old story. What you want is to give them emotionally something that's satisfying, but also opens the universe wider, does something that they haven't seen before, but in an emotionally satisfying way. So for instance, when I came up with the idea for Far Beyond the Stars for Deep Space Nine, it took us into the world of 1950s science fiction writers, which was something Star Trek had never done, but it showed the audience where we came from, why science fiction was important, why telling your truth is important, and it dealt with race in a very powerful way. And, um, and I was very, very glad that episode sold and got made, and people are still complimenting me on it 20 years later. People often don't know what they'll love until they see it, you know, and so it's uh, like Star Wars. You know, if, if they tried to describe Star Wars before people saw it, I don't think it people would have understood what it was gonna be because it sounded like crap. You know, this guy travels around with this big hairy creature and, you know, and then there's this guy in a mask and he's the villain and he's, you know, it would sound like, well, Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, I wanna be a Jedi Knight. It's like, oh God. But, but then you see it and what made Star Wars great was that it was a visualization of everything we'd been reading in science fiction for decades but had never been visualized that well. And so that's what set it apart. It wasn't that it was enormously original, it was that it was transferring to film what had been, we'd been reading about forever, but what had never seen on film. And so that was what made it so exciting, you know, flying through the asteroid belt and all those wonderful things, the laser battles and you name it. It was, it was great fun. It's one of the most entertaining films ever made. So, yeah. What do you think the new Star Wars trilogy got wrong? <sighs> That's a hard one. It wasn't for lack of trying because I know J.J. Abrams and I know he loves Star Wars and I think he was afraid of, of blowing it, but, um, but he certainly put everything he had into it and he certainly did a lot of things right. I mean, the, you know, building a full-size Millennium Falcon, for instance, but um, Star Wars has a very limited bag of tricks. It's like 
there's the good guys, the Jedi Knights, and the bad guys, the the, the New Order, or or you know the the, the whatever you know. The, the, it's like good guys versus bad guys, and the bad guys have a weapon, and they're gonna blow something up, and you know it's like it's so difficult, and because you and then Mandalorian has expanded that a bit. They put a baby in it, Baby Yoda, but um, uh, you know it's just there's so many ways. I mean, I thought, I thought J.J. was very clever with his version of Star Trek. A lot of people are down on that version, but I think he actually did a very good job of bringing it alive again and finding a way of reinventing it. Um, but with Star Wars, it's like, who are those people? Who is, who is a Kylo Ren? Who is, you know, I mean, he kills Harrison Ford. We're never going to forgive him for that. I mean, it's not like Darth Vader comes around at last and saves his son, which is a great story arc. It's like... Kylo Ren put the lightsaber through Harrison Ford and he fell down and he was dead. You know, it's like, you know, you it doesn't go somewhere that you want it to go. I don't care if Rey and Kylo Ren are drawn to each other. I don't know who these people are. You know, and, and they're like they're like less interesting versions of the characters that we started with, you know, with uh, Luke and Leia and Han. It's like you don't, I mean, like Poe Dameron, who is that guy? Why do we, I mean, I like the actors very much. I think the actors generally are extremely good, but it's just, you know, where, where are you going? You know, it, and, and then, so it, and basically the first movie goes like this, then the second movie goes like that, and then they try and jam it back this way. It doesn't, it doesn't flow, it doesn't pay off well at all. It's just weak storytelling. And, uh, but, but again, when you view a property as a cash cow, then you just try to get your best people and try and hope that one out of every three or four will click. And because that keeps the franchise alive. And uh, it's a cynical way of looking at things and certainly not um, creative, but it's a machine, it's a factory. But um, that doesn't mean you can't get great Star Wars stories or great Star Trek stories or any of this stuff. Some, you know, it's like it, each time out, it's the luck of the draw. It's not that people are trying to create crap, they aren't. They're trying to really do a great job. And if it fails, it's, it's, it fails simply because what they tried or the direction they went didn't, didn't pay off. I think, you know, uh, Kevin Feige's done a great job with the Marvel Universe. He's, he's made a lot of great, great films. I'm not a huge fan of Marvel, but I recognize the artistry of what he's done. Um, you need someone at the, at, at the top of the food chain who really kind of has a vision whether that's Rod Serling or Gene Roddenberry, whomever, you need that person who kind of keeps it on track. And it's hard to find those people, they're very rare. If you were put in charge of the Star Wars trilogy, mm -hmm. how would you have approached it? I, I would have uh, tried my best to make it good. <laughs> no, I mean, here's, here's my real feeling about Star Wars in terms of speaking as a, a creative artist. I think the, the structure of the first trilogy is very solid. And, uh, but the Ewoks, by the time he got to Return of the Jedi, George Lucas decided he was making films for children, not broad-based family entertainment. In other words, there's an adult, there's a certain adult quality to the first two films, that the third film with the Ewoks and all that. It's like, let's make some teddy bears. Let's, let's make some products. And then when he went to the prequels, he needed, you know, he was writing them. He needed a writer who was solid. He needed to bring in a strong writer because the, the basis of the story you know, the fact that, that the best Jedi becomes um, evil and, is, and then ultimately rises to the occasion to save his son, those first six films, that structure is really interesting, but the telling of it was very poor. And so, first of all, it was, as I say, they were films for children and they were kind of silly, but also the writing was really poor, the dialogue was really poor, the design stuff was great. My friend Ian McKaig designed Darth Maul, but, um, but, they, but also, when, you, when you're thinking of it all as something that's going to help sell toys, then you're not thinking, oh, well, look, here's this great character, Darth Maul. Why don't we give him a personality and why don't we have him continue longer in the show, in the, you know, in the series of films? He was great. When Ray Park is fighting two guys off with, you know, with one lightsaber, you know, it's astonishing. When he, I mean, he's great. And they cut him in two. I would have had him, you know, stuck back together and come on back. You know, it's... But, um, but I think there's a lot of weird vibes in, the, in those first three films. It's like, hey, look, you're a 10 year old kid and I'm gonna marry you in the next movie. It's like, holy cow, you're his babysitter. And then you, you, you know, next thing you know, you're in bed with him. It's like, what? 
you know, it's, it just gives you a creepy feeling, you know. Um, and, and also, of course, that kid couldn't really um, act much. And, uh, you know, so it's just lost opportunity. 